It's time for some more red and black colours of Mammut. Except this time the colours are not red and black. The model is the Kenworth C509 and to go with it we have the Mammut Triple Road Train trailer and dolly set. Just like that we're onto the weigh bridge and the Kenworth weighs £1.4 ounces, which is nearly 570 grams. We follow that with the road train and it's £3.4 ounces which is nearly 1.5 kilograms. So let's take a look at the C509 box and of course size does matter. There are photos of it and on the back we see that this model is made by Drake Collectibles. It has the model number 410304. With that said, let's open the box and see what's inside. There's the usual pair of trays. And also in the box is some paperwork that we'll look at shortly. You need a sharp knife to cut the tape because there's so much of it. And lifting up the lid, there's the model parked inside. We lift the model out and there are plastic stands inside the tray. And we just need to take the one off that's still on the model. And also in the box is a bag of parts and a plastic pointer. Included with the model is a nice reprint of a marketing brochure for the real truck. It tells the story and shows some nice pictures. And it also includes a page with specification information. So it's always nice to see a link between a model and the real machine. Also included is a Mammut collector card and this is model number 2 out of 1250. Moving to the road train and there's a photo of it on the box. And if we turn it around we see some details on the back. And again this is made by Drake Collectibles and it's model number 410305. The packaging of this model is a bit different and as you can see it comes in a very different style of internal packaging. Fortunately there's no tape to cut and there you can see the various model pieces packed inside. This model also comes with a marketing brochure reprint and the real trailer is made by Freighter. This brochure tells the story of the Freighter company and there are some nice photos of their trailers. Next up is a single sheet and that includes information about the model. On one side the features and functions are described and that then continues on to the other side. This one also has a collector card and it's model number 3 out of 750. We start with the C509 and out of the box the coiled lines are springing everywhere. But you can plug them into preformed holes and then park them nicely. And that's good for displaying the model on its own. As usual for a Drake model the mirrors have to be fitted and they press into preformed holes. As an option you can fit a towing hitch to the front. And actually it's got a sticky back and you literally stick it on if you want it. Also available to be stuck on are various signs. To attach a trailer the fifth wheel has got a spring loaded lock. And because of the nature of the freighter trailer that's very difficult to operate with fingers. So here we're using a screwdriver to get the lock open and then we can lower the freighter trailer onto it. Hey presto, it's easy when you know how. But if you're slow to learn you can still use fingers to try and attach the dolly. And when that inevitably fails, you have to go back and use the screwdriver. There's some detailing you can add and that includes spare wheels which can fit underneath the trailer. And as we're joining trailers up to make a road train, a couple of them need to have the connection points fitted. These are moderately tight fit but they will pull out quite easily. So here we've added road train signs to the front. And we're also going to fit some gates to the front and back of each trailer section. And these just press in. If you want you can add a full set of gates down the side but we won't do that. And at the back we can add signs as appropriate. We 
We start underneath the C509, and as you would expect from Drake Collectibles, it's very detailed. All of the components of the transmission are modelled, and there's a very full set of tanks on both sides. At the back there are convincing looking rear differentials, and there are decent tyres mounted on the wheels. The raised roof has got some nice beacon lights, and there's what looks like an air conditioner on the roof. Other smaller details include air horns and lights, and it's nice to see a proper flexible aerial. Moving on down there's a chrome visor and windscreen wipers. The air intakes are also an interesting detail. The big radiator grill is top notch. It's properly etched and see-through, and there's a Kenworth badge on top. The lights are excellent and there's a big chrome bumper. Looking at the side of the cab and there's a mass of high quality details. This includes the air intake and there are also nice chrome wheels. And the detailing of the cab door and the steps up are all very intricate. Another standout piece of work is the big chrome exhaust with its etching. As an Australian truck the Mammut colour scheme is red and white rather than the usual red and black. Behind the cab there are a variety of textured surfaces including another very nice etched grille and there are very good rubberized wheel arches. The fifth wheel plate is a plastic part and the rear wheels look very smart with their red centers. Behind the cab there are lights and rivet head details and realistic looking coiled lines. At the back there's an accurate number plate and a very nice touch is the soft mud flaps with the Kenworth name on them. The road train consists of three identical trailers, and looking underneath, you can see that the structure is modelled really well. Hoses run along the length, and there's a box on one side, and in addition to the soft mud flaps, there's intricate details around the rear axles. There are two identical dollies included, and they have a full set of hoses and coiled lines and they are manufactured to the same high standards as the trailers. The edges of the trailers have finely cast structures and a metal textured surface. The boxes have got detailed handles and there are graphics. And an incredibly small detail are the Mammut fleet numbers which are different on every trailer. The rear ends of the trailers also look convincing with the freighter graphics. And there are very nice chevrons and lights. There is also a unique number plate, and that's also different on each trailer. If you have patience, you can also join up the coiled lines to the trailers. And if you don't have patience, well, you shouldn't be running a hospital. We are down under the C509 again and it has notched steering, and it can be set to a very good angle. At the rear the wheels are fixed to common axles and spin freely, and there's also proper sprung suspension front and rear. Out on the Cranes Etc Superhighway, and the C509 moves very smoothly. And as you can see demonstrated here, the suspension works very well too. Let's set the steering to full notch and you then get a very good turning angle and the model poses really well. We've already seen that the fifth wheel has a spring clip but it also has a degree of longitudinal movement. Next up if you want to look at the engine you can do that by raising the hood but be careful not to force it you might just need to lift it slightly. Underneath is a properly modelled engine made up of a number of different coloured component parts. Another feature of the model is that it has opening doors on both sides, although you have to be a little bit careful with how they interact with the mirrors. So the angle of opening is a little bit restricted. Although it's hard to see here, the seats do have an up and down air ride function. Turning to the trailers and the rear wheels all spin very freely and there's independent suspension on each axle. And that suspension has a good range of movement. 
The trailers also have landing legs and they can be unscrewed to lower them. And they're nicely engineered because there's no visible screw threads. The dollies are also well engineered and they have suspension on the axles too. Right side up, this is the rear trailer suspension in action. The dollies also have a full range of rotation and that nice springy suspension. The drawbar can be raised and lowered and it also has an additional feature which is a support leg which can be lowered. Let's move on to look at the full model and we'll start by adding some loads. And for that we'll use some Mammut crane sections. As an alternative we'll now load up with some sight cabins. So this is a very long model so it's time to do a dim check and it's about 42 inches or 106 centimeters. This is another very high quality Mammut scale model. As is usual for Drake collectibles, the standard of detailing is very high and that's combined with excellent model engineering to produce plenty of functionality. When fully assembled, it produces a very impressive haulage model and it's something a little bit different from the usual heavy haulage. Overall, there's no doubt this model is excellent.